Everybody, welcome back to DNJ's Epic Side Quest. I am Justin. Joining alongside me here is Derek, and we are also joined by David Kogel of the now um, resurrected Xenomorphing a Hive Mind podcast. We are back after a year and a half hiatus. I saw that. We have returned. How do you feel about that? Excited? Very, very. I uh, I needed a break with the four or five of us working a lot of hours and. There's only so much you could talk, for us at least, Alien, and I was starting a new uh, job at the time, so the year off ended up being a blessing in disguise. Now we're ready to bring it back and um, have some fun. I really will certainly help with that. Now there's tons of content. Yeah, I'll have to make sure I get back checking that out. So Yes, the reaction episode should be up in a couple days. Very cool. Uh, will that be on Spotify? Yeah, Spotify, um, Apple... Podbean are the three main ones. Working on getting everywhere elsewhere too. Cool. But Podbean and Spotify are probably the best bets. It should be on Apple as well. Got you. Well, yeah, today a different episode for us. Justin, I don't know about you. I didn't prepare anything for this. <laughs> so I didn't just... either. No. Hey, that's the best way to do it. We uh as I forgot I forgot who said it, we're like the, the punk rock of podcasts. We just kinda wing it as we go. So you're right <laughs> up my alley. <laughs> yeah, we'll just wing it. It'll be good. So but yeah, we're gonna talk about alien romulus uh, or aliens romulus i don't remember if it's alien or aliens it's right uh, here on my little thing yeah. oh shit it's i can't even background it. yeah but they're alien thank you romulus. thank you you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> yeah just i know like alien is definitely something i'm super interested in i don't know it's been a fandom i've loved for a long time so mm-hmm. it's always fun to talk to somebody else who has a big passion for it as well and Justin, I I know you're big into the Giger stuff. I always I don't want to like assume because I don't want to be an asshole. But that's what happens <laughs> when you assume. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm the bigger Aliens fan out of the two of us, and I just kind of drag you along into it sometimes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're not you just gotta drag your drag your friend along. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. For me, it's mainly I like the aesthetics and the look more than I care okay. the stories. That's fine. The movies Makes have sense. plenty of that. So, yeah. The movies have plenty of that. I am I am definitely in a wonderland when I am watching these movies. Like, I'm probably not paying attention to the story as much as I should be. Um, so, therefore, Derek will bring something up, and I'm like, um, I don't quite remember that. But, like, if you were to describe the scene, I'd be like, oh, yeah. I remember <laughs> that. Where should we start with this? Um, I guess we could start with the basic. What you guys think of the movie? I liked it. I I honestly liked it. Uh, I'll be the first to, I guess, cut the hesitation here. Um, <laughs> I didn't mind it at all. I, however, I can see criticisms with it, and while I have some of my own, that very well could be related because I'm watching these movies from a visual standpoint. Right. But the first thing that i i mean what i do remember from the end of the first movie is that the xenomorph was sucked out into space and i'm like how the hell did it end up in this rock crater thing to be retrieved did i am, am i the only one who like missed that or no, I i'm guessing after thing. all that time it got fossilized and maybe got trapped in something i don't know okay. like that out there for 20 years that long of a time I don't know. I mean, it was a long time, but yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. And, I was kind of weird about that too. And why would it be floating like in the remains of the Nostromo? 
Yeah, I guess for a dramatic effect, they had it by it, but it probably would have floated a long ways away by then. But it looked cool from the beginning of the movie, so. Oh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, from a visual standpoint, but, you know, but like yeah. consistently. Logically, yeah. I mean, I don't really watch these movies for exact logic <laughs> as much as I <laughs> worship this series. I thought in Hollywood they paid someone to pay attention to the continuity. Yeah. They never, they, they never, they rarely do. <laughs> well, they had to have a way to tie it back to the first movie right away, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Especially yeah. for the, the newer fans or people who just watched the first or second one, seeing the Nostromo. And you couldn't even see all of it. It would give them, like a, you know, a, hey, I know that ship, you know, type deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, enjoyed the movie the first time but yeah i had it was some of like especially in the the later half it was just kind of like why why are we doing these things but then i know you know you had said dave that you saw it a second time and it was better the second time and i saw it a second time yeah. and I would with that yeah. the first time seeing it you know you hear some of these lines these callbacks and you're just kind of like yeah. grown yeah. you don't you know then the second time i mean you know it's coming you know it's there but it's just not as much of a, a hindrance, I guess, but right. Yeah. Like, Cause the first time I saw it, you know, you're waiting for this movie for seven years, all the hype. So you're going in almost stressed because the, the, the prequels are what they are, especially covenant. I mean, it, it shot the series into, you know, extinction for a few years. So you're looking at it with really critical eyes and I'm like, this parts I was groaning at. And then when I saw it the next day with a regular audience and stuff, we were rolling our eyes at the crowd fucking, they loved hearing the lines again, you know, the, the end, which I know is divisive. The crowd loved it. They gasped, you know, at the first appearance of the, we're, we're spoilers, right? We're doing spoilers. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, the part of the, the hybrid offspring thing, like the first appearance, the audience loved it. You know, I've had friends tell me that image is going to be burned in their brains. Cause they're not like us. We don't dissect and dive and look at every nuance in the series. They're just going and looking to get scared, see some action. And that's what this movie did. You know, and going in the second time, like you said, knowing what to expect, I just kind of able to sit and watch it and go, huh, it's actually a pretty cool movie. And, you know, and I've been saying for years with Predator did it with Prey and this did. Look, sometimes you have to just keep it simple, stupid. And right. that's what Alien Romulus did. It's not perfect. Their fault. But it got the movie back on track. If it continues to be successful, maybe the next one, if Fede gets it, he could maybe take a little more risks, do something that's more his. But you had a franchise need to be straightened out. As much as I love Prometheus, Covenant, not so much. It left, it left a bad taste in everyone's mouth, especially the studios. I mean, Covenant had that record-breaking, had that amazing first week, and then had the record-breaking die of the second week. Studios remember that shit, you know? Yes. Yeah. You know, people could love Covenant and talk about the little, little, little things to break down, but that's not what the studio needs to see. They need to see the public enjoying it and it getting a profit and for the first weekend that's what this did because the word of mouth for this is way better than the prequels so we're already off to a good start yeah i mean i'm sure just like with any movie i've seen a lot of hate especially in like the alien groups you know yeah of course it seems like people are just trying to stir shit up and yeah yeah oh i left the theater and no no, you didn't right you didn't didn't leave the theater you thought you thought about doing it yeah you watched the trailer for the movie, right? Yes, yes. How much of it, the movie, did it give away? I, I was able to tell a couple parts were for the end of the movie, but it didn't give away too much, I thought. It did a good job kind of teasing you, because I was able to tell a couple scenes were from the end fight, but other than that, it didn't really give away much. It did a good job of not really ruining anything. Oh, well, that's good. I know I purposefully avoided it, because just from Covenant, I didn't want something similar to happen again and i i thought justin had watched it and he did not so i was surprised when we were talking after the movie uh, that he didn't watch it so yeah some trailers these days could tend to um tend to give away too much yeah i thought the movie did like all the way through i felt like on the edge of my seat i felt tense suspense i never i, I never really felt too like terrified which it was very tense yeah and, and i think some of that was with the pacing i thought it was really good i'm curious you know, we got the countdown in the movie again. You know, it's like 45 minutes or whatever. Is that how much time was actually left in the movie at that point? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have uh, to, when I get it on Blu ray, we'll have to take a look at that. <laughs> yeah. I thought about checking my watch and stuff, but I didn't. Um, but yeah, just the whole like feel for the movie. It definitely felt like an, an aliens 
it like it belonged. I mean, it didn't feel out of place. Yes. yes. That's definitely, um, I mean, it's the first time in how many years? I mean, the face huggers were cool. Um, we saw an alien hive for the first time in forever. Um, all this shit that should have been in movies that we hadn't seen in two, three decades, which is kind of embarrassing almost for the, it's kind of nuts, especially the, the scene when they were walking, um, with the face huggers when they're trying to be quiet. That was the whole theater. just went, <laughs> no one wanted to move. It was really cool. I'm like, <laughs> nicely done. Yeah, that was a cool scene, and I kind of had, like, I was thinking about that, like, I'm like, would this work? Because in the hive, isn't it supposed to, like, it's hot as shit in there already, isn't it, in a hive? Yeah, it's supposed to be hot, yeah. So, like, I was like, would that even, like, be, would that work? You know, I don't know how hot it's supposed to be in an alien hive, but right. I always imagine it hot and humid. And Yeah, they always go in the humid areas to, um, to build their shit, yeah, yeah. So I was curious about that, but I, I mean... I know I was kind of holding my breath for that part too. I, yeah, I would have just been, I think I would have been running for the hills. <laughs> I was in that. It was a cool scene. At least I you know it was something different. The, the movie did a good job of doing repeating stuff, but kind of doing its own thing, which was nice. Yeah, I agree. I know, like, I talked to Justin about it, and, you know, I didn't get to see Alien in 1979 when it came out in the theaters. I didn't get to have that moment you know that chest burster for the first time yeah. absolutely scare the shit out of me and so now that's like gonna be so hard to do in any alien movie to come up with something new and yeah. something different seventh movie people have to remember that you know as it's, it's not easy to make more movies and get better unless you're mission impossible you know to to get better as you go for a seventh movie this was a hell of an effort yeah uh i mean it was a lot of fun it was fun yeah and that's okay yeah, I mean, well, you want to have fun at these, right? Yeah. Well, I think I think that it is extremely difficult to, I guess, add ingenuity and variety to these movies because, like, if you think about like the alien itself, when they refer to it as the perfect organism, it kind of is from a design standpoint as well. Yeah. Because Geiger did this amazing job of well, yeah. Planning out the life cycle, the different stages, uh, the environment that it lives in. So, like, how do you take something that has already already been perfected and add to it? Yep. Yeah. You have to awesome. almost try new things, even though it'll piss some of the, uh, the fans off. Sometimes you don't have a choice. You got to try something. Right. And something I, different. I think that, like, the movies, every, every movie after Alien is really just a trial and error with some success and some failures and romulus was an attempt at taking what they have learned from those movies yeah and applying them into one cinematic experience uh to try to get the best of all of them yeah pretty much it did yeah i mean i i know i picked out bits and pieces from i think all the movies um going through maybe not covenant but no i don't think so more prometheus no real covenant yeah, but I mean, you definitely had beats from Alien, Aliens. I mean, mm -hmm. tiny bit of Alien 3 when the one guy died. And I kind of tied that. I felt, I mean, it was kind of a mix. You know, the music, I felt like there, some of the music felt a lot like from Resurrection. And then, I mean, the whole thing felt a, a lot of uh, Alien Isolation. Yes, um, big just, isolation. <laughs> yeah. You know, it just kind of mashed everything together. There was some person when they're walking down the escalator. I'm like, oh, that reminds me of Alien Isolation and the save points um, from the yeah, gamer cool. in there. Really cool. And even, I mean, for part of the movie, you kind of feel like it's just the one alien you're dealing with. And then, yeah, you walk into the hive and you find out there's a shitload yeah. of them. So, yeah, just I, I don't remember how far you got into that game, Justin, but uh, you should get back <laughs> into it sometime. I think I got to the part where, like, the alien first makes its appearance and then I just. Yeah. Couldn't, couldn't go on. The game is phenomenal. It's terrifying and it's, and it's difficult, but... If it was third person, I would be more inclined to play, but I just uh, can't do first person. It's worth it. Put it on easy mode and just enjoy the story and the ambiance. It's worth it. <laughs> it's oh, worth easy it. mode. Easy, easy mode, I still had a hell of a hard time with. I mean, it's still not easy. I still wanted to have a heart attack every time I played. Yeah. <laughs> what a great game. Yeah, after I got home from the movie, I'm like, let me re-download Alien Isolation. I'm like, let me bring that back. What uh, were some of the other things that you guys liked out of the movie? I mean, the set design was just incredible. I mean, it whole thing felt lived in. I mean, the colony, uh, Whale and Yutani realized what absolute bastards they are. <laughs> you know, yeah. 
Rain's ready to get transferred out, and then she, she just doubles the amount of time needed and says, go go to the mines, we need you. <laughs> Come on. Everything is just, everyone's struggling for to make a living. It really felt, you know, um, like Hadley's Hope before it got overran by aliens. Like, you got to see kind of what it was like. The, the creatures were really cool. Andy absolutely, David Johnson killed it as Andy for that character. I mean, he was phenomenal. He was really good. I thought, I thought for the most part, the cast as a whole was really good. Yes, I know people yeah. were concerned about you know the being a younger cast and everything, but I, it didn't bother me any. I thought they were all really good. Yeah, no, they were fine. They were fine. It's not like they were young anymore. They're they're, they're their mid twenties. It's not too bad. No, yeah, early to mid twenties yeah. or something. Yeah. What one thing I noticed both times when I watched it? What's her name? Kay Cat. The one that was the pregnant. pregnant girl? Yeah. yeah. When she's walking down that hallway after the chest burster and there's like an electrical spark at the end of the hallway and you can just see her like jump a little mm -hmm. bit like she flinches. I don't know if you guys noticed that or remember that, but to me, it didn't feel like that was acting. I felt like that was like a real reaction, like it actually scared the shit out of her and she wasn't expecting it. And it was subtle, but if you watch and you didn't oh, notice cool. it. Yeah, look for that next time I watch it. Yeah. I don't know. It was just cool. I'm like, oh man, because I remember reading stuff saying, or maybe it was one of, uh, maybe it was when Jamie, when they got to interview Fede, but he was talking about uh, how, you know, some of the sets are actually like, you know, like mazes and they're trying to find their way out and stuff. I love that everything's practical. Yeah. And so you have something like that go up. Maybe they didn't tell her about it. And yeah, she just reacted. I don't know. That scene was great too. When the, uh, the birth of the, uh, the alien was really cool. Really cool. And some of the, one of the other guys, pointed it out that throughout the movie you could see the electrocuting thing can't god i can't think of the fucking name stuck in the alien's head throughout the movie the taser thank you jesus christ the oh, taser shit, stuck really? in the alien's that. head throughout the movie yeah oh yeah. Wow. i didn't realize that either i go Son of I didn't didn't realize so. that. yeah hmm. interesting yeah attention to detail yeah that whole like bit with uh i, I saw somebody on reddit call it the wall gina yeah <laughs> yeah when he rams the stick in there and man that was a pretty <laughs> gruesome death that's Isn't it, those are cattle prods aren't they yeah yeah so i think sure yeah. basically what it yeah. was yeah yeah just ramped up a little bit mm. those were probably there to when they were experimenting to keep them back trying to think yeah. of other stuff that i like sorry go ahead justin no i was just gonna say i was gonna talk about the wall gina see this is one of those moments in the movie where like i lost myself in the detail of what was the wall gina instead mm -hmm. of what was happening like it peripherally i know that you know the actor's jamming something up there to try to like destroy the alien but i'm sitting here and i'm like observing the beauty of the detail of this thing this yeah. movie gave you a lot to take in man there's a lot of detail and so much so much i can easily watch this movie on mute and still take in i still get enjoyment out of it oh yeah for sure between the ships and the uh, costume design and the aesthetics dude there is just so much to eat up i would imagine that like if the xenomorph was a legit thing and it somehow needed me for harvesting i'd be all like this is fucking cool you know <laughs> like <laughs> i'd be sitting there all strung up like yeah. Yeah, this is awesome get me a pencil oh. and some this paper like you got any snacks mr zina what's going on God, i need some diet do man <laughs> <laughs> which one of the books has like the religious cult where they're like offering themselves to it it's not labyrinth is it, is it labyrinth? music of the spears i don't remember that might be that might be music of the spears i know it's one of them where they they offer that was um that was a cool little sub story that was, that'd be cool to explore in the uh in later movies as well. Oh, there's a prequel comic comic coming after this too, by the way. I don't know if you know. I did not. Yes. Yeah. I think October oh. sometime in the fall. Oh. Okay. I just oh. finished reading into Charybdis like last week. It's good. Oh. I still prefer um Cold Forge and you can definitely tell they read the Alex White books from this movie too. I didn't notice that so much. End. I guess I didn't pick up on much of that, but I had heard people say that too. Yeah. I liked uh the gun. I thought the gun sounded really good. The gun was yeah. That's cool. awesome. That was cool. The one thing that bugged me, you know, when uh, you know, she's and that whole like acid thing was cool as hell. Um yes. zero G thing. Yes. But when uh Andy's counting down, you know, you're at twenty yeah. percent. I was just waiting. I'm like, God damn it. So he's gonna say, 
she's gonna say next time they just walk right up and knock i was just waiting on it and thank god they didn't say it but i was like i know this is coming just with the countdown there were way way too many what do they call them member berries or one-liners there were almost every almost every scene i'm like all right relax you don't need them every scene no like, yeah. like you said the second time to the movie was a little more digestible but they were way too many there was no need for it. the movie could stand on its own just fine it was good enough where they didn't need to do with that many of them i think so i mean i guess at that should we kind of transition to what you didn't like as much yeah well that's a good segue as any um that's definitely one of them the biggest one was there was i mean for the story it ended up working but there was no need to bring back ian home there was just no need for it you could have done anything else you could have brought another actor i mean hell you even could have used some wrecked david android where that would have made sense but there was no need to bring him back it again the second viewing i just kind of got used to it you know it's cool that today asked his you know widow if it was right good to do but there's no one reason to do it. deep fakes and ai especially when you're talking about practical effects you know there's so many other you could have hired a new actor or brought someone back i think it kind of also took away another thing a chunk uh, took the film away from greatness was doing that it was lucky the rest of the movie was so good that you could let it go but i think it was a mistake doing yeah, the, the ian home stuff there was just did you hear why they did it though did did you hear why they did it? No. Because, uh, and I, again, I don't know if this, I didn't like verify or like look into the, the validity of it, but apparently it was because Ian, before he passed away, felt like Hollywood just kind of gave him a cold shoulder. So hmm. I believe that what they wanted to do with Romulus was like bring him back in a way that like, you know, did his character justice. Because, you know, hmm. Michael Fassbender, there was, you know, he's in two movies. Uh, yeah. up did had some cameo or something like that. Right. Um, so he was the only one who, like, Android that, like, didn't get kind of like a second appearance. So, this right. is, so they asked his family, like, hey, could we do this? And they're like, yeah, well, he would love that, you know. Oh, so, okay. So All I think right. it's one of those things of like a limitation of technology, um, but the intention was so pure and the compassion for him as an individual and the role that he played in the original Alien movie was enough to outweigh the technical limitations. And right. No, that's cool, though. I didn't know that. That's very cool. A hundred percent agree. Like that technology is not quite there yet. You can see it with you could see it with caricature and the Star Wars stuff. You know, you you could see it with the Admiral and the Star Wars stuff. It's just not quite there yet. But I think that looking at it from like, hey, the only way that we're gonna get better at it is to just keep doing it. It's gonna be awkward, but we're gonna make leaps and bounds with what we learn because of all of the criticism. So I think that Yes, it's a really shitty point in the movie and really confusing, but we should uh, ad admire the bravado in, in trying to... At, at least the, the reasons for doing it were good. Yeah. So that's not often seen in these Hollywood parts these days. So that that's cool. It gives it a different perspective when watching it. Yeah. Well, yeah absolutely. I wish they would have at least given him a different name because I, I'm fairly certain that Rook is a character in one of the extended universe novels. That's like a is it a bishop like twin with you know? Oh Rook shit! Bishop. I think you're right. And I don't remember which one it is. Pretty certain of that. So I don't. Huh. If anything, yeah, they could have just gave him a different name for it. But unless yeah, that was, was intention, a nod to the comics, maybe he was doing. Unless I'm reaching here. You know, maybe that was yeah i don't know that's yeah the whole bishop or bishop ash thing even like when you first seen that half of them just laying on the ground i'm like yeah that kind of looks like know. him you know yeah and i was wondering but that justin was sitting next to me i mean i jumped pretty hard when uh he <laughs> grabbed grab <Grabbed> the desk <laughs> Kaylee Sting, when he grabbed rain but now we had some me. good scares i saw the audience jumping on some parts of me. <laughs> i think the big the hard part for me the criticism I have is with the, the humanoid hybrid or whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it. Uh, I really wish that it was not the engineer's face. Okay. I wish that it was something else because it just it looks it just looked very dollish. Very, right. you know, everything else has this like really complicated, you know, design to it. But then the face is just 
God, it reminds me of like uh, AI robots or robots or whatever the hell that movie with Will Smith Sw- oh, is. Yes, yes, I remember. Yes. Yeah, yes. I robot. Yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. Talking about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it just had that like blank face and like there's not very much detail there. And I'm like, okay, I get that they're going for the engineers. But at the same time, it's almost like you start with the engineers and then uh, you get the aliens and then you know you have the hybrid stuff going back and completing the circle it's just like oh that's really how evolution works or procreation yeah. works like yeah. maybe maybe in you know granted this is all fantasy and sci-fi and fiction but i don't know i just i felt like it could have been a little better looking i thought it was still creepy as fuck looking though i mean oh like, for sure yeah. Yeah, gangly armed and it's a very small criticism, but yeah, yeah, especially when it first uh, appears, it was very effective. Well, that's like yeah, when I when was... she birthed it, and then we saw that baby's face. I looked at Justin, and I was like, "Fuck yeah, dude!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, that was kind of like you know, it's one of the constraints of a movie is time, but you know, just how rapidly even the, the xenomorph, you know, the face hugger, it was like minutes, and I know you know, in the original, you know, it's few hours or whatever but it just seemed really sped up and then you know you get the other guy who has one like on his face and it gets its thing kind of in his mouth Mm -hmm. and nothing happens to him but i mean we saw in covenant the other guy it barely touches him and he still has his you know slow it out of him later yeah i was i don't think i think even the studio has uh this movie kind of felt like it gave prometheus props and kind of said covenant and no kind of push it aside a bit but um yeah the covenant to fight all logic in many 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 ways i mean there's a, a lot of cool scenes in covenant but oh yeah the whole backburster scenes is worth the price of admission everything you can turn it off after that once david shows up you can turn the movie off <laughs> but yeah the whole god complex thing is really interesting but i think that they failed in its execution yeah oh ridley scott couldn't make blade around 2049 so he shoehorned it into his alien movies it's what um, he did what he did it's pretty obvious <laughs> yeah pretty obvious. you know from that movie though i really liked that scene where david's like in the ship unleashing everything you know it's spinning down like that was cool so like i wanted to see more of that give me more of that that was cool yeah well the, what could have been a great scene was the whole dynamic with david and shaw and then they just kill her off screen instead of showing that in the movie what are you doing what kind of decision is that like him experimenting on her or dissecting her. What show that? Oh yeah, how <laughs> gnarly and brutal would that have been? That's that's in tune with the Alien franchise, not the poetry and the flutes and the Lawrence <laughs> of Arabia shit. I mean, oh, this is Alien. Show disgusting alien things. Right. right. I think that there's a lot of people who are turned off by the concept of the engineers. And I, think I like them, man. I think the engineers are cool. I do too. But I, I think they're a great addition to the franchise. Yeah, I think that the, the why people struggle with Prometheus and, and Covenant so much is because it, 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 and for me, it, it sums up into one scene in Prometheus where uh, David dips the black goo on his finger into uh, yeah, That's it. The, the black goo. That's yeah. The, uh, but they're talking about like I, I forget the the character's name. Um, Holloway, huh? Holloway, Holloway, like Holloway. Yeah, is that the she's or he's in a relationship with Shaw? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So they're playing pool or something, and you know, David's like, "Why do you want? Why do you want to meet your creator so bad?" And then he's like, "Well, I mean." We just want to know. We just want to know more. Like you know, why did they make us, etc. And then David's like, "Well, why did you make me?" <laughs> and then he get, Holloway goes, "Well, because we can." I feel like when people apply that very central theme around Prometheus and Covenant, mm-hmm. like it all just it clicked for me. It just made sense. Right. Yeah, like there is no reason why the engineers just did because they could. Yeah, yeah, that whole. The black goo, the pathogen, or whatever it was X one, N one. That's um, that was quite the divisive addition to the franchise. It's like it's cool because it gives us different types of xenos, but it's just such a shortcut to everything. Yeah, you know, and it creates such problems. Now we have these, and we have David assuming it's still been retconned from this one. We have David floating in space with all his uh, 
pathogen. And then we have now we have um, Andy and Rain floating into space, pathogen, and it's all done before Aliens and Alien Three. It's so convoluted now <laughs> because I mean, to me, this the the goo is just it's more advanced than everything in Alien, Aliens, and Alien Three. Yeah. So it creates too many problems. My big brain uh, ideas like it's a cool idea but i think had really done set prometheus and covenant after alien 3 i think it would have been maybe accepted more because it's more advanced it kind of makes more sense to me at least you have this black goo which accelerates everything all right so they figured out after you know ripley dies or after aliens whatever to me that makes more sense but now you have everything set before and you're just leaving open for the story just to go everywhere and not make any sense you have all this stuff happening while ripley's floating in space or while it's before she even you know faces them again there's just so it creates so many holes this shit i think it's a cool storytelling idea but it's just it creates more problems as much problems as it fixes you know we had this tv show coming that is supposed to take place like two or three years before or Prometheus, yeah, right? That's a ballsy move. I mean, jeez. I don't know. They're they're treading dangerous ground, but this is I don't know. We'll see. Noah Hawley's really good. So I trust him. But, I don't um, know that I've seen any of his stuff, but I suppose you know, big risk, big reward, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Cause yeah, so yeah, because it's said a year or two before Prometheus, I'm like, oh, fingers crossed. <laughs> what did you guys think of how the Xenos looked in this movie? They're pretty badass. I thought they really did a good job with the design. The, um, I mean, I said it looked a little bit different since they were, um, you know, for lack of a bit, they were engineered. You know, they created them from the, the big chap, pretty much. So it looked different. They they looked terrifying. They finally made the face hugger scary again. I'm skittering along the walls and coming in the yeah. groups. Fast. They were fast. They had the, they had those, there's almost like mandibles on them for, you know, to, to grip around the neck more. Um, the chest burster scene was great. That was really cool in 4D, by the way. In 4D, when the chest burster was coming out in the back of the seat, it went thunk. Oh, thunk. shit. It was oh. awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was sick. Um, and the adult Xenos looked really cool. Uh, no complaints, really. And of course, it was all practical, so they looked really good. No complaints. I didn't, I guess my only minor complaint would be like their teeth. I didn't like how like metallic y they looked. They almost looked okay. like you had, they had like a grill right. a little bit. Yeah. But right pretty minor yeah I mean, it's i mean i agree they look other than that i liked them and i mean it seems scary especially again when the uh you know the pregnant girl the man she had a rough go in that movie <laughs> she i don't know this. oh she, my god she might have had the worst of it think of that she had a, she had a rough time jesus you know it gets used as it watch watches this thing explode out of her friend yes. it's used as bait bait which like that was scary as hell that was a great scene too. When you see it creeping up in the uh, in the dark and then swoop down behind her, or even when it's on the catwalk above her, like yes, yeah, <laughs> man, like, that thing had to see her. I mean, I'm sure it knew she was there. Yeah. Yep, I didn't envy her at all. No, and hung up on the wall, left her dead. And she gets tricked into using the accelerant, thinking it'll help her. Yeah, that was like, why did you do this? Don't yeah. do it. No. Yeah. Then get. Birth a alien Xeno hybrid engineer baby, then get killed by it. Really, a rough day. It's an all time bad day. <laughs> so, uh, I know I okay. I don't know what you guys thought of. Like I, so people or they said like you know there was a, a scene so disgusting in this movie. The cast and crew were like they had to look away. They're disgusted by it, and it was obviously that. I didn't really know what it was doing to her. If it was like like was it breastfeeding on her? Because I've I've seen people thinking both ways. Like, it's just eating her, and they're like, no, it's, you know, breastfeeding off of her like an infant, basically, you know, because she yeah, sticks what I think her hand down her shirt. Is doing. I, I don't know. I didn't, yeah. I wasn't really sure what to think. I I mean, it wasn't, I guess, you know, maybe that would have been too far if they would have been more explicit filming something like no, that. Oh, yeah, that would have. <laughs> I think it was breastfeeding. But just the angle that you had, it was hard to tell. Yeah. Didn't know yeah. for certain, but. but what about the, I think, the, you know, the infamous line? We haven't touched really touched on that. Uh, get away from her, you b -b 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 bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. I I hated it, but when I saw it in a crowded theater in Manhattan, everyone else cheered. I'm like, all right, I guess I'm the asshole because everyone else <laughs> likes it. 
I'm that asshole. You know, I guess for us people have watched the movies more times than we can count. We didn't like it, but the the, the regular movie goer loved it. And that's more important, honestly. So Yeah, I know when Justin I, and I saw it opening night, there was cheers in the theater for that. When I, I yeah. saw it a couple of days later in my hometown, there wasn't, you know. Hmm. Yeah, it was um one many of the many examples of too many of them. That one definitely got the biggest reaction. But there were just so many, so many. Yeah. I mean, there was that, there was, you know, and the, the the guy, when he gets pulled up in the hive, you know, and he's like, is that all you got? And like, oh, there's Alien 3. And I yeah, I can't remember what the other lines were. Well, um, Purple Organism, you heard that a couple times, I yeah, think. Can't lie about your chances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One out of another, a uh, Hudson one I didn't catch till the third time I saw it, uh, when the, the dickhead cousin goes, uh, what are we going to do now, huh? What are we going to do? I'm like, ah. Uh, I didn't catch uh, that the first. Yeah. yeah. That guy, he was, he did do a pretty good job playing a slimy character. He did. He played a good job being an asshole. <laughs> he really did. The brother was cool. I mean, really, I mean, the actors all did a good job, but the only real memorable characters were Rain, brother, uh, Andy, of course, who stole the show and hopefully breakthrough role for him. And um, Rook, those are the ones everyone remembers. I had a hard time picking up names the first time through the movie. Other, you know, yeah, I did too. I mean, I'm bad with names to begin with, but in movie, it took it took us like the second time for me to get people's names. Did you guys see? I read an article. So the girl that played Navarro, that was her first movie role. Period. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, huh. I guess she auditioned for it, and uh, however that process works, I don't really know. And then they must have liked it, so Fede got in contact with her and. She's like, it was almost like he was trying to talk me out of it. Um, <laughs> she's like, you're going to have this thing on your face for like a long time. And like, are you claustrophobic? And she's like, no, I'm not claustrophobic. And so, <laughs> so then like when I saw it the second time, I went with my wife and I'm like, okay, so there's a character in here, like first movie period, take a guess of who it is, you know, once we're done. And she wasn't sure. She didn't have any idea. So that's a good sign. Yeah. Yeah. Too bad she went out. I mean. You're expecting some deaths, I guess, but... Oh, you know, yeah, so you're not going to... In the alien movie, there's only going to be a couple survivors left, if even... <laughs> I really wasn't sure if there was going to be any survivors the first, you know, when I first saw it, which would have right. been kind of bold, I think, to kill off everybody. Yeah, that would have been cool to do, like, a Rogue One type thing where everyone just fucking dies. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been cool with that ending, too, actually. Yeah. What did, uh... I mean, the ending was... Very similar to Alien, but... Yeah, typical. Blow him out the airlock. I did like the die motherfucker at the end. Though. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> that was good. And I think it was um, Michael pointed out in the hour recording yesterday, what was cool is in space, everything was everything shot in space was just no sound. So that was a good good little touch. Yeah, like in the beginning, that especially that first minute or whatever it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even when she airlocks into space, it's just nothing. No sound. Yeah, I liked it. I don't know what else. Uh, what else can we say about this movie? Um, things that Andy was definitely the the one the role I think everyone's gonna be talking about for months, years past this because his to do that in one movie, pretty much like a broken down, soon to be you know thrown out synthetic, and then he gets the chip and is this you know Whale Newtani company badass to then go back to the other one. That was it's just an amazing performance. I mean, one of the best in the series that I've seen. And the relationship with him and um, Rain was great. The whole like brother-sister dynamic was believable. Um, the way they cared for each other. That, I think, is going to really stand out, too, other than the, you know, the, the action and the suspense. You know, I think um, David Johnson and Andy is really going to really gonna turn some heads. Yeah, I hope. Yeah, I mean, they obviously left it open for another movie. Well, of course. <laughs> and, uh yeah, so I hope there is another one, and he returns. But I mean, even I thought Kaylee Spaney was really good. And obviously, she would have had beats of Ripley, you know, especially towards the end. But I like that I, didn't bother me at all. Like no, she, she stood on her, she stood on her own. It was she wasn't like uh, Daniels, who was I like to say Goldbot Ripley, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but just you know, there's some similar shots. You know, you had another elevator type scene, and yeah, yeah, but it still looked really cool, and she I like did. looked good. And yeah. it felt believable, like yes. you could see yeah. some fear there. Like mm -hmm. I don't know, it was good. I thought she was good. I thought she was a good main character, and yeah, her and Andy. I wonder what kind of trouble they'll get into. Yeah, and the characters were actually all of them were pretty smart. 
unlike some of the previous movies, they really didn't really do anything stupid. We had them questioning, which was like, you know with the prequels, how fucking dumb they were. Like, I know, it, you know, statistically, I felt organic. Like when the face hugger was on, was on her, they thought to, you know, maybe freeze a tail, it'll come off. You know, it didn't matter, but it was, you know, they believed in a realistic matter when the face huggers were attacking in the, in the lab, they were smacking them down instead of just standing there or whatever. And that was a great scene. That whole sequence from the face huggers um, thawing out to the, the ship crashing was just awesome. That whole sequence was great. You know, as talking about this movie, I, I'm kind of wondering, like, well, why didn't I really like it the first time I saw it after we're talking about it now like this? But Man, we're not the only ones. So <laughs> it's that's a good sign. I, yeah, yeah. I, I would love to see another another couple movies. So hopefully that the TV show does good things. And yeah. Yeah, hopefully the movie is, I guess, I don't know what kind of budget they had. And I, I haven't seen, like, numbers, you know, for the opening weekend or anything. Yeah, they, already, they already beat the budget. Well, that's... The budget was 80 mil. It's made 108 and counting. Well, eight, I mean, 80 million, is that, that sounds like a fairly small budget for a movie nowadays. Yeah. It I, I mean, it's a lot of money, but... Yeah. Well, good. I'm glad it made back the money and then some, so sweet. Yeah. Yep, yep. And hopefully other... Uh, you know, it could keep going for us uh, old school fans, and most importantly, for the newer fans, they could, hopefully now they go, oh, they'll start watching Alien and Aliens, Alien 3, their prequels, Resurrection, watch it all. Hopefully it brings in millions of new fans. That's, you know, what I think is sometimes lost in all the criticism, is obviously making money and bringing new fans is more important than uh, satisfying us nerds. If uh, <laughs> If a few thousand nerds get pissed off, but the general public likes it and makes money, I'm fine with that. Perfectly fine with that. <laughs> yeah. As long as there's more alien stuff coming. Yeah. Yep. I did see, I don't know if this was clickbait or if there's any truth behind it, but I saw something that Fede wants to do an AVP movie with the guy who did Prey. Yeah. I don't know it'll happen, that. but it's cool that he wants to do it. That would be insane. That would be insane. I mean, I would watch it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so would I. So would I without hesitation well anything else we can any other thoughts points uh, criticisms final thoughts i don't know i think it's about everything yeah it feels kind of weird for justin and i because it's been what 45 minutes or so but yeah. that's a pretty short <laughs> episode for us most of ours are two plus hours so yeah our um i mean granted there's different there's four of us but our no, we had three of us. Yeah, it was taken for three of us. Our rhymeless episode, I think, was like an hour and a half, I think, about. So, but we usually do bite sized episodes to try to keep them like an hour ish. So, you know, this is a nice bite sized episode. I think, yeah, definitely. So, well, I guess before we go, Dave, uh, one more time, let the people know where they can find you. Yes, um, you can check us again. Um, I'm on Twitter. So I'm going to call it Twitter. I'm not calling it anything else. Um, at Xenomorphing426. Um, catch us on Facebook, um, Xenomorphing a Hive Mind podcast. Um, we're going to start an Instagram page. Most importantly, please check out the podcast. We are much different than every other alien podcast out there in a much more relaxed atmosphere. Uh, we do all the breakdowns, but it's a lot more laid back and fun. Um, we're something a little different, which is not something you really say these around these parts. Um, you can listen to us on Spotify, Podbean, and, um, apple podcast so check us out if you want something a little different i will make sure i check you out um i don't remember if i've really listened to your stuff in the past because i used to listen on google podcasts and now that's gone away so i've been forced yep. into spotify so yeah, yeah. there's a good reminder for me to look you up there so i'll check it yes, out yes yes do do please do please do and i'll actually be on the perfect organism podcast recording with them on wednesday for their reaction episode so i'm making the rounds it's good to be back well, it's good to see you back around, and I'll, yes, I'll listen you. to that when it comes up, too. So. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks again for taking the time here. Sorry, Justin, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, I was just going to thank him for his time. That's all. No, of course. Anytime. You guys are great. Thank awesome. you. Well, have a good night, Dave. Take it easy. You, too. Have a good one, fellas. See you, guys. Dangerous of the close.
MJ's epic quest. CMJ's epic quest. CMJ's epic quest. CMJ's epic quest. CMJ's epic quest.